Dave, good to talk to you. And how about that debate last night? First time Obama and Romney asked about guns, specifically the assault weapons ban. And if anybody, I think, had any doubts, the president confirmed it last night. He's going to push to reinstate that assault weapons ban. Right. This was the first time, Jenny, that the president has sort of stuck his head out from behind the curtain where he's been hiding on these issues and said, yeah, I would like to have the assault weapons ban renewed. And by the way, I don't like handguns either. Yeah. Uh, you know, the defense that his, uh, his spokespeople have had is that, look, he's been president for four years. He hasn't done anything to speak of. Uh, to restrict your Second Amendment rights, which is not technically true because he has done some things, but he hasn't taken us on head on. And therefore, what's this fear of Barack Obama? The fear of Barack Obama stems from the fact that we know that from day one, before he was ever elected to public office, this guy has been a strong believer in restricting our Second Amendment rights. When he was a private citizen, community organizer, a member of the board of the Joyce Foundation in Chicago, he helped fund the effort to try and convince judges that there was no individual right to keep and bear arms. That view was rejected by the Supreme Court. When he was running for the Senate, he came out for a national law banning concealed carry laws. He came out for laws that would have shut down gun shows. When he became president, after belittling gun owners during his campaign, when he became president, he and Eric Holder said they wanted to reinstitute the Clinton gun ban. They wanted to, to have a host of other restrictions. They didn't do it for two reasons. One, it quickly became apparent to both of them that the Congress was not about to go along with that kind of thing. And secondly, they got involved in trying to you know, redo our health care system and were busy uh, during the first term. But this is a guy who promised Sarah Brady that he was going to deliver and that soon he wouldn't have to be operating under the radar. That's the same thing, in essence, that he told the president of Russia. Let me get through this election and then watch me, baby. That's yeah. what he revealed in the debate, the town hall debate this week. And also, I mean, he did what the anti-gunners are so good at. The way he said it, you know, I believe that weapons that were designed for soldiers in war don't belong on our streets. Right. You know, he did, he did, he did what they've been doing for years. First of all, he called them automatic weapons. They're not. The civilian version of the AK, the civilian version of the, uh, uh, the, the, AR-15, the uh, AR-15 are semi-automatic sporting weapons. The AR-15 is the biggest selling long arm in the United States today. It's not a gun that's simply yeah. designed for killing. It's used for sports. It's used for competition shooting. People coming out of the military who get back into the shooting sports like to use a gun they're familiar with. That's why they used to use Springfield bolt actions, Garands, carbines, the like. And now they want a version of something they're familiar with. And the AR-15 is the civilian semi-automatic version of a gun that they trained with. That's why they're so popular. They're a very good platform. They can be used for many, many different reasons. And they're, they're far more than a million have been sold to civilians uh, for perfectly legitimate purposes. So he makes that mistake. Unfortunately, Romney corrected him mm -hmm. on that. He said, you're not talking about automatic weapons. You're talking about semi-automatic weapons. That's a different kind of animal. And the second thing that, uh, that, he, that he did was he tried to uh, equate all of this uh, with crime and talked about Chicago. You remember right. the, the whole thing about Chicago? In Chicago, they don't prosecute gun crime. Mm -hmm. We had this whole argument back in the 90s with Bill Clinton, as you'll recall. Uh, the Clinton administration wanted more gun laws to take guns away from or deny them uh, to honest American citizens, but they didn't really go after criminals who used guns to commit crimes. Prosecutions of criminals using guns went up during the Bush years and has plummeted again now that Barack Obama is president, because these folks don't blame criminals. They blame their tools. Yeah. And that's what Barack Obama did uh, in this debate. It's what he's done during his entire career. If he had his way, Americans would be disarmed. He can talk, as he does, about how he believes in the Second Amendment, but you notice running through, he says, I just want some common sense restrictions. 
Those common sense restrictions would close down gun shows. Those common sense restrictions would get rid of the right to carry in all of our states. Those common sense restrictions would make it illegal for Americans to purchase uh, the uh, semi-automatic weapons. Those, uh, those restrictions would restrict the rights of Americans to shoot on public lands and do a lot more to change the shooting sports in this country, the right of Americans to defend themselves, uh, and the heritage that, we, that has been passed down to us, not just from the founders, but from our grandfathers, our fathers, and our great-grandfathers. You know, and, and also, in Governor Mitt Romney's response, he brought up for the first time again ATF's gunwalking scandal, Fast and Furious, and he right. brought up the president invoking executive privilege, and it was clear. You could just tell from President Obama. He didn't want to touch and, it. And, yeah, he wouldn't touch that because that is a big loser. You know, the, uh, the, the uh, reporters like to talk about, well, yeah, the Justice Department hasn't given up everything. The president of the United States invoked executive privilege to prevent the truth about Fast and Furious from coming out. It was such an outrageous extension in the use of, fast, of, uh, use of executive privilege that even the Washington Post editorially said that's not what executive privilege was designed for. And he has no right to be doing that, but he's done it. Uh, he's covering up for his guys, uh, and the whole Fast and Furious thing is a tells you how he feels about guns and the legitimate use of guns because he wanted to use that as an excuse to impose more restrictions on uh, firearm sales, particularly on the southern border. You know, the president even didn't bring up his favorite line. Oh, let's blame Bush on that one. You know, <laughs> well, it, it, well to, to ABC News's credit, uh, when he did that during the Univision interview some weeks ago, Jenny, you remember he, yes. he was asked about Fast and Furious. Univision was very concerned because more than 200 Mexican citizens have been killed with those firearms. He said, oh, well, that was a Bush program. Uh, and as soon as we found out about it, we stopped it. Uh, ABC came back and said, Mr. President, that program was initiated in October of 2009 when George Bush was in Crawford, Texas, mending fences. It was your program. You did not stop it when you learned about it. You stopped it much later after trying to use it when it became politically disadvantageous to continue it. So he doesn't want to go there. He wants to protect his people. He wants to protect Eric Holder. He wants to protect the people below him uh, who helped him in this effort. And, and, and it, is, it is, given the number of people killed, it is the greatest scandal that, the, that this administration has faced and has been able to duck and dodge. Uh, so he's not going to confront it publicly anymore because he can't get away with sloughing it off blaming it on George Bush or blaming it on someone else because everyone knows it lays at his door. Well, and how about Libya? Uh, you know, the way he handled that last night, I think, do you think he dug a, a deeper hole for himself? He's talking about, hey, you know, the day after, I called it an act of terror. We I, have I the think video he time. did, Jenny. I, I don't think this election is going to be determined on that question, but he did what he always does. When he's cornered, he lies. Mm -hmm. He lies about guns, he lies about spending, he lies about taxes, and he's lying about foreign policy. But this one was so obvious that uh, even with the help of the moderator, afterwards oh, no everybody kidding. had to look at it and say, well, you know, if, if you knew and said it was terrorism the day it happened, how come it took, how come for two weeks you then denied that it was terrorism, blamed it on a on a YouTube video, had your U.N. ambassador go on all the talk shows saying the same thing, and had your spokesman, the White House spokesman, explicitly deny it was a terrorist act. And he goes to the U.N. two weeks later, and That's he's right. talking about, hey, it's the video, it's the video, how yep. shameful, you know. But this is, this is normal for, for this president, and in the moment uh, of that debate, he sort of got away with it. But w somebody made the point about debates in today's world. They don't end no. at the end of the debate because you've got all of this social media, you've got YouTube, you've got all the analysis that goes on. They end a week or so later after people have parsed what the candidates have said. And on that one, he, he was and remains on very dangerous ground. Yes, and you know, throughout the debate, you mentioned the, the moderator, Candy Crowley. I mean, she appeared to get in, into the debate. She became part of the debate. She was interrupting. She was rephrasing. She was following up with questions, bringing up stuff that Obama himself didn't even mention. No, that's exactly right. And 
I, for the life of me, uh, and I've wondered about this for the last couple of election cycles, why the Republicans on the debate commission <laughs> acquiesce in moderators that uh, are almost predictably going to be hostile to their candidate. Uh, the the uh, moderator in this debate, Candy Crowley, came back and would follow up with pointed questions about Romney. Did you really mean, or what does that lead you know yeah. to? She didn't do that with the president. No. And then she intervened uh, as sort of the uh, official fact checker where she was wrong. Oh, especially on Libya. You know, she, That's right. She, but, you know, when you look at it, you depend on what polls you are looking at, you know, who won the debate. Some say Romney did. Some say it was a slim edge for Obama. The snap polls show that Romney won clearly on the economy. But we got a couple of more weeks to go, and this is going to be a tough fight, isn't it? It's going to be a very close race. We've known that all along. I suspect that this debate, the town hall debate, it energized Democrats because they, they liked the Joe Biden performance. And so they like this one. But a number of people today and in the next few weeks are going to continue to point out, and I'm not talking about Romney partisans, we're going to say, look, this president went through this debate, didn't talk about what he's going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. He didn't deal with these problems. It's why the polls, whether they gave it to him on points or whether it was even and those polls differ, almost universally say that on the economy and on the big issues that people care about, Romney did better because at least he addressed those issues, and the president didn't. He just went on the attack. So I think uh, I think that this is not this poll, this debate was not and is not a game changer. Mm -hmm. But if the president thinks either that it convinced undecided voters to go with him on the one hand, or that it reversed the air that's sort of leaking out of his campaign slowly, I think he's wrong. I think that, uh, that, that the trends that began after the Denver debate continue. And in terms of uh, supporters of the Second Amendment, Boy, he, sure gave, he, <laughs> gave, he gave credibility that, uh, to everything that we've been saying for the last year.